Hey, hey everybody, here I am again, back for story number 11. Um, I've been busy. Um, you, like Pee Wee, busy doing what? Well, you'll see in a minute. Uh, I'm going to call this one my colonoscopy, or lady, please, I'll pay for the effing pantyhose. So, what's that all about? Well, wait a minute though. First off, before we get started, uh, I have something I do want to read. Um, this is from Don's uncle, and Don's uncle's pretty smart. He's a lawyer, and he told me, he said, you know what? You need to copyright these. And I copyright my artwork, so it would make sense that I copyright this. What he told me was, he said, these videos and all images and content are copyright Stephen John Phillips 2010, all rights reserved. So thank you very much, Don's uncle. I appreciate it. Um, all right, so anyway, um, my colonoscopy, that's where I've been. People are like, where you been? What's going on? I've been worried about this colonoscopy. I don't like it. I didn't want to do it. Um, first off, the colonoscopy really wasn't that bad. It was the preparation for the colonoscopy. And in my case, the preparation went horribly wrong. So let's talk a little bit about it. First off, I have my directions for the colonoscopy. So, if you don't know, you have to take all these laxatives. That's what it's all about. So, first off, when you start, please purchase a 238-gram bottle of Miralox powder. Well, I have that. Here it is. Unfortunately, this is not exactly the right size. And what happened was, I got two of these. My wife said, oh, this will be all right. You can just use these. So, I'm supposed to use this. The other things I'm supposed to use are Ducalax laxative tablets and then to top it all off a fleet enema. Well I have a two-pack. Uh, I hope to never ever use this at all. I used the one pack. I didn't. I didn't this time. I've used it before but I didn't this time and I, I'm not hoping to ever use it again. But anyway, let's talk about a few of these directions and I'll tell you where it went wrong. Um, the directions are at 2 o'clock, the day before you start drinking the Miralax prep, take all four of the Ducalax tablets. So, okay, what happened was my wife went out. She said, you know what? Um, I'm going to go out. I bought everything for you. You're all set to go. No problems. But I don't want to be there for that fiasco. And uh, who could blame her? Uh, so she went out. So I had everything set up. So I took, at 2 o'clock, four Ducalax tablets. You're only really supposed to normally take one of those. So four, ooh, that's not a pretty picture. So I took the four tablets, okay? Where do we go from there? Um, then at four o'clock the day before, mix the entire bottle of Miralax in a 32-ounce bottle of Gatorade, Crystal Light, or any clear non-alcoholic fluid of your choice. Well, here's where things went sour. Um, she went out and... I started to mix it and I thought, oh, what's going to be best? I don't want to, I don't know what to mix it in. Well, I decided, I asked my wife, she said, why don't you mix it in Sprite? Sprite tastes good. So I got 32 ounces of Sprite and I took the Miralax powder and I did everything that I was supposed to and I went to shake it up. And when I tell you, it exploded like a volcano, like a kid's uh, volcano experiment in science class. It shot on the ceilings. It went everywhere. But where the problem lie was, there I was. I'd taken the four Ducalax tablets and I had to have this stuff. Of course, Sean, not home. Kimmy, not home. So I had to go out. So I went out with taking the four Ducalax tablets to find this stuff. I went to three different locations. No, sir, we don't have it. No, sir. By about that time, I went to the Rite Aid. And let me tell you, I was holding my sphincter together at that point. And I made it in. Maybe I'll back up here. You can see maybe what I was wearing. I put these on just to show you. Um, I had on these Budweiser, can you see these? Budweiser pajamas, okay? and I had forgotten my glasses. So it was like, what am I gonna do now? So I had to get a pair of drugstore glasses 
And I don't know if you guys have ever seen drugstore glasses, but they are pretty rank. And they didn't fit, and they had on this big price thing. So here I am running down. I'm in Kimmy's gardening clogs because I was in such a hurry. I had to get out. So I got these clogs on, these crocs. It's like green gardening crocs. And I am running through. And I got these glasses on, and they're sideways, and they have this big thing so you can't steal them. And I'm going down the aisle, and there's this guy there, and I'm like, oh, oh, where are the laxatives? <laughs> you should have seen this guy. I think he thought I was some sort of pervert, you know. I have these glasses on, and I'm like, I got to find the Miralax. So I run down there. I finally find it. This is the third place at the Rite Aid. Again, remember, I am holding my sphincter muscle closed the whole time, and my stomach is going the whole time. I'm like, ugh. And I finally get up to the register, and there's a line. And there's this lady there, this fat lady, and she is trying to return these pantyhose. She said they weren't, they said, lady, you can't return these. These have been opened. These could have been worn. She says, well, they're not, they weren't marked right. They're not big enough. And it's like, well, I'm sitting there with these glasses like this, you know, and like trying to, and finally, it's like, lady, lady, please hurry, hurry. I'll pay for the effing pantyhose. I gotta go. So I think they either thought that I was like drunk or, or whatever, that they finally decided that they opened another register and got me out of there. And that was that. Um, so I made it home the whole way, the whole time. I finally made it home. The next day, I get to the event. I mean, there's all these other prisons. I get to the event. I go in there, <laughs> and there's this guy. He's sleeping. <sniffs> sleeping and snoring, kind of like the Three Stooges. Then in comes this old man, shuffles in this old man with his wife. I love this. He comes in there, and he's like, it's like checking in, and his wife's like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to go and park the car. And they're like, Oh, oh, no, no, you have to, you have to go back. You have to go back. You, you're late. So he's like being taken back. And as he says goodbye to his wife, instead of saying, I love you, honey, or, or, you know, whatever you might say to somebody, he says, he says, I'll think of you while they're doing it, <laughs> which I loved. It was like, I'll think of you. So I was trying to figure that out. You know, like what it, it, I'll think of you while I'm being anally probed, you know? It, was he doing the probing or does she normally do the probing or why would he think of you? <laughs> so anyway, that was my favorite line once I got there, I'll think of you. Um, it wasn't so bad. You know, I got in there, they were very sweet. Um, the only other bizarre part of it is they wouldn't let me leave. When you go out at the very end, like you're there on the stretcher and they're like, okay, um, you can't leave until we hear you pass gas. It's like, what, what do you mean? It's like, oh, we encourage you to fart here. You have to fart. We have to hear you fart. So it's like, there you are on these like little beds and there's these little curtains and all these people and the whole time it's like a symphony of farting and it's like farts like you've never heard and next so I couldn't leave until I farted and I finally farted and I made it out turned out it was only one little polyp so it seems as though I'm all right I'm not dead yet had lived through the colonoscopy so there you are um, all right guys well I'm back uh, and it looks like my colon gets a fairly clean bill of health. I'll let you know when I hear the rest. Okay, thanks for coming, everybody. See you next time.